Well, the Network for Genomic Surveillance in South Africa has detected two COVID-19 variants of concern in the country. Outside of the dominant strain first detected here, numerous cases of the variant detected in the UK and in India have also been discovered locally. Four people who recently traveled from India have tested positive. Two cases of those identified in Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal. Let's take you live to Health Minister Dr. Zulim Kize on uh, some of these developments. Minister, when you see the reaction of just ordinary South Africans to this news, there seems to be a sense of panic around how at risk we are, in particular after the detection of these different variants in the country. Yes, certainly we, we can uh, uh, understand that uh, people would be uh, anxious when we hear that there's been the new variants that have been discovered. We must also indicate, though, that uh, the variant that has been uh, in South Africa has actually been all found in a number of other countries as well. It is a concern to us because we have also seen that the numbers are increasing. At this point, we have identified the B117, uh, <coughs> which was uh, identified in the, in, in the UK, about 11 cases. And then there were about four cases of the B16172, which was identified in India. I think it's important for us to say that the major concern that we would have is that we shouldn't actually be complacent. We need to be stricter again in terms of our containment measures, reduce large gatherings, reduce you know people getting overcrowded, and insist on wearing of masks and also use of uh, hand sanitizers, washing of hands, and so on. We need to actually deal with it in the way that we had seen the earlier one. And if we start that now, when the numbers are still low, it, we can actually manage to delay it, rather than be complacent until the numbers go very far, uh, high up. Minister, there have been big concerns about the kind of interventions and even enforcement that we have taken place when it comes to uh, the country's airports, especially for travelers who are making their way uh, from different parts of the world who may have been to either India, the UK or the US, which we know uh, are still regis registering some high numbers right now. Yes, certainly. Firstly, let me say that uh, <clears throat> there has been a, a concern about that. Uh, however, we must know that the numbers of flights have been dr drastically reduced as compared to where we were last year. Secondly, we don't have a direct flight from India. So there's no uh, people who will be coming straight from India into South Africa. But what rather happens is that people are coming via different other countries that may not have been marked as being very... Uh, you know, uh, risky areas. Others are coming through ports. We've increased, increased our surveillance and we want to increase it more so that uh, we must get to a point where everybody should be able to get tested as they get off the, uh, you know, as they get off uh, the aircraft so that we can detect early to see what the problems are. We're processing all of those so that uh, it should be easier <clears throat> for us to identify uh, more people who might be having a, a risk and then also increase the quarantine and, and all of that. So all of that is under uh, discussion for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for impl implementation very soon. But it also doesn't <laughs> seem like the advice from um, airport officials to travelers is to self-quarantine for at least the first 14 days with, well, when they're in the country. And that in itself, of course, can also increase the risk. Well, we will just need to intensify that if that become if that has been identified as an issue. As far as we're concerned, we hadn't changed any of those rules. So if there would be any laxity reported, we would have to attend to that fairly quickly. So we will actually go and look into that and see why uh, there would have been any relaxation on that. Are you concerned about the finding of the, U the variant discovered in the UK <clears throat> uh, already being at com community transmissibility levels in the country? We would be concerned about uh, new variants coming in because we already have a problematic variant which uh, had been identified in the country. Now, the more variants we get, the more we would be concerned about it. Nevertheless, we do understand that they will ultimately be here because people's movement is unrestricted. Uh, people can come from one country to another, uh, even if uh, you know you've got countries uh, that have close down their borders, but people still find ways of getting into different countries. But what I think is important for us is to intensify our surveillance at the border, uh, ports of entry, particularly airports and the um, uh, uh, 
uh, seaports. It's very, very important that we do that. But also we need to in uh, intensify <clears throat> our own containment measures inside South Africa, where people have got big parties, big meetings, uh, where there's no distancing and people are, you know, uh, 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 very uh, complacent. That's what we need to attend to because we went through the last wave, which was very intense and very, very problematic for us. But nevertheless, we were able to do so. Uh, and uh, uh, we, everyone was very serious about taking on their, using their mask and distancing and so on. We're going to have to put up uh, additional uh, you know, suggestions or recommendations for uh, numbers to be, uh, uh, for numbers of meetings to, to be actually relooked at so that uh, we, we actually delay as much as possible this, uh, this uh, uh, wave. But we've seen that the numbers have started increasing. Of particular concern uh, is that uh, in Johannes, in sorry, in uh, Houting, in particular, various districts there, the numbers are starting to increase. They have not reached a point where we should say it's third wave. It can still be contained. And then uh, the other areas which we have uh, indicated concern about is the Free State, as well as the Northwest and the Northern Cape. Now, fortunately, because of those, the numbers are not so high. We have actually put uh, measures to try and contain them, but they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, been uh, you know uh, worrying that those numbers are, are showing an increase. So we need to send the message very strongly. For the past two weeks now, we've been sending a very strong message even to our hospitals in the different provinces to actually make sure that they've got adequate beds. They must prepare now. If there's any uh, need um, for increased uh, admissions, they should be able to do so. Mm -hmm. Oxygen levels, they must also look at that. The staffing, they must look at all of the issues that we've had to deal with in the past waves so that uh, we don't get uh, under pressure when the situation arises. But uh, we must say that we have noticed that in Gauteng, the numbers have started to increase. They've not got to a point where we could say that they've broken through the technical level of where we define a third wave. But nevertheless, we still have to act on them. We're beginning to go on a response mode so that we must be able to say how to ensure with the, that there's good and effective contact tracing, how to make sure that we uh, stick to the issues of quarantine and make sure people don't move around if they've been found to be positive. All of those issues are actually being activated at this point. Dr. Mkise, I want to talk to you about the uh, updated public guidance, and it's out of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in, in, the, U, in the U.S. And they, of course, on Friday, saying that um, coronavirus is very much an airborne disease and that one can <coughs> still contract the virus regardless of the kind of social distance that is in place between yourself and the next person. Uh, firstly, in terms of South Africa's stance, where are we with that? And how is it going to inform the kind of policy interventions and public health standards where, in terms of these measures that we've been implementing? We, we would always uh, follow what, uh, uh, these, what the uh, global community of scientists would be indicating as their latest findings in relation to this matter. Uh, we had uh, uh, quite a lot of debate about <clears throat> whether this is airborne or uh, droplet, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we will continue to, to follow that debate without it changing a lot in terms of what we need to do in the prevention, because the major issue is the prevention measures. Now, the prevention measures are largely uh, you know, the same. That's why we've actually raised the issue of people having to you know, sanitize the tables, the instruments that they are using, where there's sharing of instrument or sharing of uh, uh, surfaces like tables, like uh, <clears throat> computer bases and all of that. We have to intensify those. Then the issue of airborne requires us to make sure that there's good ventilation. So we need to emphasize as well, but we had already sent that message because we are aware that there are these questions of whether it's airborne <coughs> or, or it's a, a, a droplet. And, and so in the process, we then have to make sure that all the necessary containment measures are used. The issue for us <clears throat> is that uh, uh, we were able to get over the large uh, second wave with, uh, with the containment measures. So that has actually given us a very good lesson that if you actually activate more strongly the uh, containment measures of use of masks, sanitation, wiping, uh, you know, uh, all the surfaces that are frequently, frequently used and ensure that people are not overcrowded and, no, uh, you know, and are sitting in a place with good ventilation. All of that becomes very, very important because for the rest of this year, 
with the vaccination program, we'll still need a lot of that up until we can see that the, you know, the, the population has been well vaccinated. So with or without vaccines, we still need a lot of these containment measures. But nevertheless, uh, the debate we are aware we will continue to follow it, but it doesn't change a lot when it comes to the question of how do we contain the spread. We also had the World Health Organization last <clears> week <throat> approving the Sinopharm vaccine for emergency use. We know that that application uh, was sitting with SAPRA in, in South Africa, that it could well uh, be under review for local use. Where are we with that, Minister? Well, um, it's, it's, a, it's something that's really been a, a matter of concern to me because uh, for a few weeks now, we're actually... Uh, you know, uh, said there must be accelerated attention on the Sputnik, the Sinovac, and the Sinopharm. So far as uh, the Sinopharm is concerned, they have not submitted. They asked for a, you know, basic information, they, uh, they, but they did not submit information on Sinopharm as such. But on Sinovac, they have given us information, and on Sputnik, the same, they've given us information. What our SAPRA team has been raising, I, I've been talking to them because uh, I've been hoping that they would have by now completed the process of evaluation. Then they've said to me that their challenge is that the, the, um, the agents that have been asking for the registration have not given them as much information as they know that uh, SAPRA knows that they've got certain information which has been submitted to, <clears throat> to WHO and has been submitted uh, you know, uh, to some of the jurisdictions. So we've actually gone back to say they must give us the additional information because what is missing is something that is necessary to be able to conclude this whole registration. But when we ask why is that the case, it appears that between the uh, manufacturer and the agent that they would have appointed in South Africa, there is a gap and therefore there's information that they don't have. But in the earlier presentation, when we first engaged with them, they said they've got this information, that information. So we know that you have it. But the question is that their own communication is the one where there's a delay. So I kept, have to keep engaging them to say, let's get all of this information and close this issue so that we can get these also registered. But, but are, you, are, you, are you looking at a process of procuring some of these vaccines right now from a government point of view? Are you in any kind of negotiations with the manufacturers of these vaccines? We, we were actually at a level of negotiations. We had actually allocated certain volumes uh, that we had asked that uh, we need to uh, procure from these particular companies. And we were just delayed by the fact that we needed them to finish <coughs> this whole issue uh, around the, around the uh, registration. So how, how, how much in terms of volumes are you looking to procure from, from, from either? Well, uh, we will look at this point. We, we haven't got an, uh, an undertaking from them. We normally announce the numbers once we've got a concrete amount that comes from them to say we can offer you so many. The Sputnik has offered up to about five million uh, of uh, of the vaccines, and we were prepared to go through that negotiation as to whether we can get more or less. But the issue was we're going to start from that discussion. But there's no concrete, uh, you know, uh, undertaking from anyone to say we have now got a agreement. Generally what we do, we get an, an undertaking that this is the amount we're ordering. They say this is the amount we're going to supply. Then we go into further negotiations. We have not got to that stage with them. But uh, they had offered that amount uh, 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 of about 5 million uh, vaccines that we could start the negotiation from there. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting that the uh, SAPRA must finish this process and then we can take that process off. Minister, as it stands, are we going to begin the vaccination drive for ordinary South Africans on the 17th of May, as promised? We said to do that. Let me say that uh, uh, at this point, uh, we uh, tonight we're expecting another batch of vaccine from Pfizer, and uh, we've already got another batch from last week. Now, the batch that came in last week uh, will be able to help us through because we're, uh, from the 12th and the 13th, We'll be doing distribution to the provinces. We'll have finished the quality control processes. And then uh, as soon as the provinces are ready, between the 15th and the 17th, they'll be uh, dealing with all of that. So tonight there'll be another batch coming through. And every Sunday now, Sunday at 20, uh, 23.45, uh, there'll be a batch coming in. We've actually uh, got a, <clears throat> and, uh, a, a, a delivery schedule of about uh, 325,000 for the next two more weeks and after that it will double to 600 
uh, and 36,000. So we're hoping that we'll keep up to that. We're still negotiating additional amounts, but of course, uh, the, the for between now and June, so that we should be more than 4.6 million by then, because the total of what we have got now and what we will get uh, in June should come to about uh, uh, more than 4.6 million. Then we I wanted to uh, get an additional amount. We just need them to confirm that they will have, they will be able to deliver because we had actually ordered a lot more because we wanted to increase the numbers for this for this term. Right. The Johnson and Johnson. Uh, we are still expecting our million, <clears throat> but the delay, of course, as we know, the Aspen uh, plant is actually manufactured. Everything is ready, and the only thing that caused us a delay was that in the U.S. they had actually found procedural non-compliance in some uh, parts of the laboratory, destroyed the stock, which, as far as we are aware, doesn't affect us. But then they ordered uh, a a review, which then was also taken by Europe. Uh, to do the same, and then they said, look, everyone must hold on, and we're waiting now that uh, any time now they should be able to release a million, 1.1 million from Johnson & Johnson. Dr. Zuelim Kize, the Health Minister, let's leave it there for tonight. Thank you for your time on News at Thank 5. You.